When you see a tutorial on creating tool tips with JavaScript, your first reaction might be, just do it with CSS. However, there are some advantages to doing a tool tip with JavaScript. In this tutorial, we are going to look at a solution for creating tool tips in JavaScript. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. It is true that tooltips are easy to do in CSS. However, in JavaScript, I feel we have a few advantages. First, we can do tooltips with much more flexibility. And second, doing a tooltip in JavaScript allows us to keep all the content, all the data in one place. For example, in a JSON file or in the HTML file, instead of putting data into the CSS. Finally, I also think this is just a great exercise for learning some things about JavaScript and working with the DOM. So even if you don't plan to do tooltips in JavaScript, stick around for JavaScript insights that you might gain. Now this particular tutorial is going to be broken up into a few parts. Once part two is done, I will add a link to it in this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, you may want to do so, so that you'll be notified when part two is available. All right, let's jump in and get started. So first I want to take a look at the HTML file that we'll be using for this exercise. Now this is what it looks like. It simply has four li tags. They're displayed as bullets. I want to create a tooltip for each one of those so that when we mouse over, a tooltip pops up. So here's what the HTML file looks like that we'll be working with. Here are the li tags. Now notice a couple of things with each of these li tags. First thing I want you to notice is that there is a data tooltip. So there's a data attribute for tooltip. In a previous tutorial, I covered data attributes, and I'll include a link to that in the description section of this tutorial if you need to review that. So this is where we are putting the data that will display in the tooltip is inside of these data attributes. Each one of these has a data tooltip. Okay. Now the other thing I've done with each of these is I've assigned a class of hover reveal. Now this class is not defined in my CSS. Here's the CSS file here. It's not defined there. I'm actually using this class in the JavaScript. I will use this class to be able to assign an event to everything that has a hover reveal class. Now why would I do it this way? Well, if I'm working on a large project and I'm going to be using this tooltip in multiple places, a way I can easily add a tooltip to something is by adding a class, hover reveal, and then adding a data attribute for tooltip. And then it will work. It will use the same code because I'm going to use write the JavaScript so it looks for any elements that have a class of hover reveal and it will set those up with a tooltip. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So I have a class hover reveal that doesn't exist in the CSS and we have a data tooltip, a data attribute for tooltip on each of these. Now I'll jump down here, one more thing to identify. There is another div, doesn't have anything in it right now, it has a class of div underscore tooltip. This is what will become the tooltip. This is what where the tooltip information will be that it displays. And let me show you the CSS that's assigned to this particular class. So here it is at the bottom. Notice I have set the opacity at zero. So it's hidden initially. Even though there's not something in it, I want to hide it initially so it's not showing up. I've established a position of fixed and then the top and left set to zero. And then here's the coloring for this tooltip. And you can use whatever you would like. This is what I've chosen to use. And then I have some padding and margin settings just so that it looks somewhat nice when it displays. And then finally, 
I've included a Z index with a very high number. And that's because I want to make sure the tooltip shows above everything. And so I put that Z index so that it won't be behind a div or behind some other element on the page. All right, so that's all the setup we have in the HTML file and the CSS file. The JavaScript file that we're going to be using to control this is linked here at the bottom, app.js, and that's what we'll start looking at now. Now, first thing I want to do is I'm going to set up a function to set up the tooltip functionality. So I'm going to call it setup tooltip. Now, I'm doing it this way because then I can call the function once I know that the HTML page has loaded and things are ready to begin executing. By setting up in a function, then I can control that. So here's the function that I set up. Um, let's just make sure that we invoke this. So I'm going to put that down here. Normally, this would go inside of an, an init function or something once I know that the HTML file has loaded. Since this is a pretty simple example, by putting the JavaScript file at the end of the HTML file, I know that the HTML file has loaded. And therefore, I'm OK to call that function right here. Now, what are we going to do inside this function? Well, first thing is I need to define some variables. And the first one is tooltip. This will contain the text that will display in the tooltip. And right now, it is empty. Uh, second variable I need to set up is a variable that points to the div object that's going to contain the tooltip. So, and we will find that by by using document dot query selector, and then I can just identify the class that is assigned to the div that will display the tooltip. This gives me a variable that contains that element in the DOM that we'll be working with because we'll be putting text inside it and displaying it. And then finally, one more variable. And this is going to contain everything that needs a tooltip. When the mouse enters it, it will display a tooltip. And so for this, we're going to use document.querySelectorAll. And we're going to be looking for hover reveal. So anything with that class assigned to it, and notice we put a dot here to indicate that it is a class. Anything with that class assigned to it will become a part of this variable. And therefore, we'll be able to assign the event to it. Now, one thing I've covered in a previous tutorial that I'll link to in the description here is that when we do query selector all like this, it doesn't create an array of objects. It creates a node list. And so generally, I will convert that to an array because I love working with arrays. It's much easier to work with arrays. And so I'm going to add this little bit on the front of that to convert it to an array. That's all we have to do in order for that to happen. So now this contains an array of elements, any element that has the hover reveal class assigned to it. So those are our variables that we've set up. Now we can begin assigning the event listener to each of these. And the event we want to use is mouse enter. When the mouse enters that element, we want it to display a tooltip. So here's how we're going to do that. We want to use this variable I've set up, this array of elements. And we want to cycle through. We want to iterate through those elements. And the reason we're iterating through each element is because we're going to add an event listener to each element. The for each method of arrays allows us to do that. It goes through every element and allows us to work with each of those elements. Once again, I've done a tutorial on for each, and I'll include a link to that in the description 
section if you're not familiar with that. Now, for each is a higher order function. And as such, we need to pass in a function that we use to indicate what we want done with that element. So here's how we do that. Function, and then inside of parentheses, I'm going to declare lm. And that will contain the element. And then we can go ahead and act on that element in, in the body of this function. And what we want to do is add an event listener. Now, some of you that are regular viewers have seen I've been using this technique in several tutorials lately. So hopefully you're very comfortable with it now and could do this with your eyes closed. Now, with add event listener, we indicate the event that we want to register and then we pass in a function that will be invoked when this event happens. So here's the function we're passing in. And with that function, I want to capture the event object. Whenever an event occurs in JavaScript, it passes an event object. And so I want to capture that because I'll need to use that. All right, now what I'd like to do is instead of putting all the code inside of this function and making it difficult to read, I simply want to call another function that I'm going to set up. And that's where I'll put all the code that will display the tooltip and whatnot. So let's call display tooltip. And I want to pass to that function the event object. And I want to pass this. Now, what is this going to be for this particular situation? It's going to be the element that the mouse enter event occurs on. So if we look at our HTML, it will be each one of these, these four. As the mouse enters this one, this will be this li tag, and then this li tag, and so on. And I need that information. I need that information to be able to get the data attribute. And I'll need the event object in order to get the information of where I want to display the tooltip. All right, so let's go ahead and create our display tooltip function. So we want to capture the event object and we want to capture the value of this. We're going to assign that to a variable obj. So there's our function. Now let's go ahead and start taking care of our tooltip. So first thing I want to do is to grab the tooltip text. Now the way you do that is we identify the DOM element. In this case, it's obj that's been passed in, which was the value of this. So it's the li tag dot data set dot tooltip. That allows us to grab the data attribute, this data attribute right here, data hyphen tooltip. This will grab it. And once again, we talk about how in the tutorial on data attributes. Once we have that, then we can set the inner HTML of this div, the one we're using to display the, the tooltip, this div right here. We can set the inner HTML of that to this text. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have it set up in a variable. So I can simply do tooltip div dot inner HTML equals tooltip. So inner HTML allows us to define the inner contents of that DOM element. It could be text. It could be other HTML as well. Now we need to change some CSS attributes about this div so that it is positioned around where the mouse is and it becomes visible. Because remember, in the CSS, I set the opacity to 0. So it's not visible right now. So let's go ahead and make those changes. 
Once again, I'm going to refer to tooltip div dot style dot top. Let's change the top first. And what are we going to set that equal to? This will define where this diff is positioned. Because with our CSS, we've set it to a position of fixed. And right now, the top and left is set to 0. So we want to set it to around where the mouse is at. And the way we can get that information is from our event object. That's why we pass this in. And that's as simple as doing e dot page y. And I'm just going to concatenate to the end of this px to indicate that's the, the unit that I want to use. Now we've got to do the left position as well. Dot style dot left oops, equals e. And this one is oops, lowercase page x. And that will give us the left position. Once again, I'm going to concatenate px. All right. Now finally, let's just set the opacity Got to do style first, opacity to 1. That will make it visible. All right, there's our JavaScript. Let's go ahead and see how this is working for us. Going to refresh this page. And there's a tooltip. Pops up, pops up, pops up. Notice how the tooltip text is changing. As we scroll through those, we'll see it. All right, so we've got something working. I wouldn't call it fantastic yet. I think there's still a lot of work we can do with this. For example, it appears right away. There's no pause, usually a tooltip. It waits till you're setting over it a little while before it pops up. Also, we're not hiding the tooltip. So I have this tooltip up here at the top. If I move off of it, it doesn't hide. It continues to be there. The only thing that would change is if I display another tooltip. And something else we could add to make it look a little nicer is give it a little bit of a fade in effect. All right. So those are the things we're going to be dealing with in part two of this tutorial. So I hope you found this first part helpful. And this is an opportunity for you to Work on this on your own if you'd like. See if you can figure out way we would solve these additional things in part two. And I look forward to any comments. And if you did like this, please give it a like. To continue learning, here are some additional suggestions. So you can click the video link in the center to access part two once it's released. And if you haven't subscribed already, click the circle link on the left. I release new tutorials each week. And if you're ready to dive into full courses, you can click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.